I am in a Marimo notebook over here and you can see something new. This is Manum Slides. It's an environment that allows you to take Manum videos and it can put them in slides inside of your Marimo notebook. And you can see it's really good at animating these math kinds of objects, but small tangent on that, by the way, uh, this software package originally appeared in the three blue, one brown YouTube series. Grant Sanderson, the creator of this channel, has been building this software package that is really good at making these mathematical visuals. And there's also a community around that nowadays. Uh, that package is called Manim. And recently someone made Manim Slides, which takes the same idea. You're able to generate these mathematical formulas and objects. And instead of making a single video, what you can do is you can make very short video segments and then present that as a slide deck. And that's something you can easily add to a Marimo notebook, uh, but also on a blog for that matter. I only discovered this package recently. I think it is super duper cool. So what I want to do in this video is explain how the setup here works to generate something like this. And in particular, I'm also going to talk about how you can use LLMs in the mix here because they've gotten really good at generating these on your behalf. But let's maybe uh, start at the start. So this work will require Manim to be installed. And there's all sorts of components inside of that library that help you construct a scene, if it were. So you've got circles, you've got dots. There's also math tech, uh, that's math formulas. There's also transitions like a transform, move to target. There's an animation group. There's all sorts of objects that you can use to describe a scene. There's also colors, uh, for example. But besides Manim, I'm also importing Manim slides. And the main thing that you're going to want is that slide object. The whole point of this slide object, by the way, is that you're going to write Manum just as you would normally. It's just that this one object over here will allow you to define where slide boundaries are. Besides that, I'm also just importing some things you would use normally, like NumPy and uh, Pathlib. But then we get to this cell down below over here, where we create a class that inherits from that slide object. Then there is a construct method, and we're going to go into some of these methods uh, in a bit. But for every scene or slide, you could say, I've got this one function. And then after that, I'm calling this next slide uh, method over here. So the idea is I uh, set up a view, then I can call next slide, then I set up the next view, then I set up the next slide. And that's going to be the way that you're going to construct this. And in this case, let's just have a look at this uh, self.showAxes method. When this method is called, it, we're going to clear the canvas first. After that, we are going to be generating some axes. Uh, this, by the way, is one of those objects that we inherited from the Manum library, just like this math tech over here, just like this one. And then after you've defined the thing that you want to draw, what you would typically do is you would call self play, and then you're going to create these axes, or you're going to uh, write something uh, on the canvas as well. And again, you kind of have to know Manum a little bit more in and out to really appreciate all the different things that you can do over here. But the main thing I want to emphasize is that if you're used to Manum, we're not really doing anything new here. It's just that we are defining what is going to be on display. And then when we go back up, show the entire slideshow here, then eventually we are also going to call next slide. Once you've defined your object and you're happy with all the stuff that you are constructing, uh, then you can tell Manum Slides to go ahead and construct. You have to do that from the command line though, and you can totally do that with a Marimo notebook. There is a small detail to keep in the back of your mind though, and that is that you want to make sure that this object that you've defined, this class, uh, that needs to be defined in a reusable cell. So that means that all the dependencies that will be all this math tech stuff and this write and some of those constants, they all have to be imported in a setup cell. That's a special kind of Marimo cell that is going to ensure that all of these little imports are defined up front for all cells. This is going to be loaded first. And in doing so, you can also create objects and functions that other notebooks or Python files can import from. And that's going to be important for the command line utilities to actually go ahead and work. But assuming you've done that, you can then start doing some commands on the command line. I'm using a little helper library that I wrote to run that from Marimo. But what you can then do is you can say, look, uh, Manum Slides, go ahead and render. This is the name of the Marimo notebook that contains this Lanchester's slide class. And then when I call render, it's going to make all the folders that it needs. It's going to make all these little videos that are between all these different slides. And when you have a look at the output, you can also see that indeed it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And eventually we are writing a bunch of files as well. That's all well and good. But next up, I would like to show this inside of the notebook. And for that, I want to use the good old iframe trick. And that means that I have to export everything to an HTML file. Now, Manum Slides also has has a convert command that you can go ahead and use. There are a few flags that you want to be aware of, though. I really like to add this controls equals true flag that's going to add the left and right button uh, on the slide. And you also want to make sure that you put everything into one single file. 
If you don't do this, then you're gonna need a server for that file to open up and be able to load all the videos. By putting everything into one file, you also make it a lot easier for this particular case, Marimo, to also take that one file and just host it internally. Again, if you don't do this, then you're gonna need a server in the background in order to uh, show the iframe. But given that it's all written in this one single file over here, what I can do is I can take Python pathlib, point to that file, read that as text, and then I can have Marimo open that up as an iframe. And wouldn't you know it, that's also how all of this works. So I can see all these math things appear. That's all pretty cool. But I can also go back and uh, I think in the beginning here, the whole idea was for Lanchester's laws that there are two armies, there's the red one and the blue one. And uh, we're gonna do some fun math with that. But this is the setup as far as running this inside of a Marimo notebook goes. Next up, what I wanna do is explain to you how you can actually use LLMs to make it rather straightforward to even build this in the first place. So as a small demo, uh, what I've got here is a different notebook, but this has a bunch of markdown on top over here. And in this case, I'm literally spelling it out what it needs to do. I kind of have a script, you could say. I'm trying to do a math proof. So this is the first step, then you gotta do this, then this, then this, then this. And what I was able to do is I was just able to open up Claude. I was able to tell it, hey, there is this one notebook that has a bit of markdown in it. Turn that into something with slides for Manum. And to be clear, I did have this a uh, bit at the bottom here where I did already have a start of a class here and the start of a construct method. It just had to fill in what was happening here. I was able to keep everything else the same because I had the starting template, but that was enough for it to go ahead and generate me a bunch of fancy slides. And this is the final result, by the way. So I can hit next. Uh, you're gonna notice I was also able to change the background to be white instead of black. You can see that I wanna start by simplifying this. When I was prompting, I also had to emphasize that I wanted the equal sign to always be in the center. The really nice thing about doing this in Marimo is that you have a view, a nice little preview, so you can also tell it to maybe steer in a different direction. And you know, this is a nice way, I think, to tell a story. You can even do fancy LaTeX things, like actually show what part of the formula needs to be crossed out. And you know, I'm a bit of a math nerd, so I also think it's particularly nice that there is a fairly elegant solution to all this. We start with something that's really complex and we end uh, with, you know, the very simple cosine function. So that's also really cool. But the main observation is that I've started to rethink what a notebook could be. And very typically, I've always thought of a notebook as this tool that's super useful to do an analysis, but I've actually come to think of it a little bit more as something that's also quite useful when you're dealing with LLMs, in particular, because you've got this interactive environment, which does make it very flexible and easy and immediately get a view into what the LLM is trying to do with code. And having that interactivity also makes it very convenient to debug early on. If you wanna do stuff like this, there's a link in the show notes so you can play around with this notebook and you can make some changes. But if you wanna use this together with Claude, just know that we do offer a terminal at the bottom over here so you can use Claude that way. But we also have a new agents tab over here. So what you can also do is start up Claude using ACP. That's gonna start something that you can use to communicate. And now I can start a new session. I can start a new Claude session. And I can now type things like use a black background for slides instead with white text. And this is going to use my existing Claude code account to also make the changes that I like. I do have to give it permission this one time. So I'm just gonna say always allow. And then after a while, you can see the output of the LLM appear uh, in the chat bar, but you can also see that this whole notebook just updated. And when I now go uh, to the slides, you can see that indeed the background is now black instead of white. And because I have lots of things open, it's a little bit hard to see what's on display here. So from the terminal, I can also just open up that slide deck directly like so. And you know, uh, now it takes up the entire browser. This is an iframe after all, so I can also look at it this way. I prefer to actually look at this from the notebook because then I can actually see what's happening and I can also look at the code in one swoop. But uh, there you go. This is Manum Slides. And especially if you're gonna be using this together with an LM, you can get a lot of results that are really cool for educational purposes. And if you wanna give this a spin, uh, links are all in the show notes. And especially if you're doing things in education, having a few of these on a site, like part of a blog, I, I, there's lots of cool things you can do with this. So go nuts.